both leaders are paranoid individuals leading paranoid regimes. It's um, more than coincidence that the two of them prefer to travel uh, not by air but by armoured train. Um, both those trains, by the way, were made originally in, uh, in Russia. Um, and they think that they're much less easy to track and much less vulnerable if they travel by their armoured trains, both Putin and Kim. Uh, and Kim's armoured train uh, even has armoured plating underneath the main carriages uh, in anticipation that somebody might try to blow up his uh, train from under the tracks. They like a high degree of, uh, of secrecy to preserve their security. Yeah. We know that Putin is seeking weapons from North Korea, but going cap in hand to a country like the North, it's, it's not really a sign of strength, is it? No, it's not. Uh, and it exposes, as you suggest, a weakness of Russia's position, which is that it lacks uh, a network of strong allies. The closest it has is China, which is a very strong power. But China, for its own reasons, has been wary about giving too much direct support and certainly not too much lethal support to Russia. Uh, and um, Russia, until this war it launched in Ukraine began, uh, Russia was actually imp imposing sanctions on North Korea. Russia and China were both very uneasy and unhappy about North Korea's uh, nuclear and ballistic missile programs. And both Beijing and Moscow had put, had joined the West in imposing sanctions on Pyongyang. Uh, so there was no love lost between uh, China and Russia on the one hand and North Korea on the other. But now that uh, Russia is feeling the pressure from the sanctions imposed on it for invading Ukraine, and now that China is taking a more confrontational attitude to the rest of the world and is, uh, is feeling more isolated itself, uh, these three are increasingly banding together. And in July, there was quite a breakthrough moment when Kim Jong-un celebrated the 70th anniversary of the armistice that ended, effectively ended, or, or at least technically ended, the Korean War. And he invited both uh, Russia's defence minister, Sergei Shoigu, as well as a Chinese Politburo, Standing Committee Politburo member, to the celebrations in Pyongyang. Now, that was um, a dramatic escalation in diplomatic contact between Russia and China on the one hand and North Korea on the other. It, it showed not only uh, it, it not only marked Pyongyang's moment of emergence from a very long self-imposed COVID isolation, it marked a, a new friendliness from Russia and from China because all three of them are feeling less secure in the world and are turning inward and prepared now to overlook previous enmities uh, for mutual security. Do they, though, form a powerful alliance, do you think? Well, Russia and uh, China um, constitute a lot of power. Um, Russia and North Korea. Uh, North Korea is not much of an addition to Russian power, but Russia at the moment, uh, well, OK, for example, its war needs, uh, it's estimated that Russia fired between 10 and 11 million artillery shells last year in attacking Ukraine. Its annual production capacity for making new artillery shells is estimated at one to two million. So having fired 10, at that rate of output, it'll take uh, you know five to 10 years just to replenish what they've already lost. So while they're cranking up production at home as much as they can, they're still desperately short of ammunition. Uh, who else is there in the world that has huge stockpiles of Soviet-ready, Soviet-grade uh, artillery shells, well, North Korea. Um, so there is a certain logic to it. Um, and North Korea, in turn, because of its own self-imposed policy of self-sufficiency and isolation called Jush, which they see as a proud socialist ideological position of self-reliance in the world, has actually meant it's a country that's in uh, periodic starvation. Uh, and in, in the current phase in North Korea, there's a very high rate of malnutrition and starvation. Uh, so North Korea is expected to be asking Russia for food supplies and probably medicine and other aid as well. So there is a logic in them coming together. They have things you know, to offer each other.
Yeah. There is some thought, though, that uh, to further their own nuclear ambitions, North Korea might be seeking some of the intelligence around developing um, potentially some form of nuclear weapon. What might Russia be persuaded to give away? Yes, it's a good question. Russia, because of, as I mentioned earlier, the, the wariness that it's had of North Korea for years now and, and the unpredictability and unreliability of the Kim Jong-un regime, uh, that wariness is unlikely to have completely dissipated. I think that would be the last realm of assistance that Russia would be prepared to give North Korea at the moment. Uh, I think there are other areas where North Korea would be pretty keen for some Russian help. For example, the Pyongyang re regime, Kim's regime, has been trying to launch a satellite into orbit with its own rockets, and it's had two of them blow up. It can't do it, so uh, I, I'm imagining that they would turn to the Russians for some assistance there. They're also interested in ballistic submarine technology. Uh, so ballistics and satellites and rockets, rather than nuclear technology, uh, would be more palatable forms of assistance, I'd imagine, that Moscow could offer to Pyongyang at the moment. It is a problem that the US doesn't quite know how to manage. They've urged the North not to supply weapons, but there's not much communication going on between the US and North Korea at the moment. No, and there, there hasn't been. Um, I saw Kamala Harris, the US Vice President, saying it would be, quote, a huge mistake for uh, Putin to meet Kim Jong-un. Um, and, of course, the Russians love that. Kim Jong-un loves that, getting attention from the Americans and going ahead in the face of those sort of uh, and, and threat, you know, threats from the US. That's great. It gets them attention. It makes them look strong. It works for them. Uh, there isn't much the US can or will do about this, but it does have repercussions. I mean, for example, uh, to now, North Korea's rival across the border, South Korea, has refrained from supplying any military hardware to Ukraine. Uh, President Yoon has said, we'll send humanitarian support to help the Ukrainians in their war, but we're not going to send lethal aid unless the situation and the balance changes. Well, if Pyongyang starts supplying artillery shells to uh, Russia, maybe South Korea will reconsider. So there, you know, again, it, it points to the weakness of the alliance bloc, which isn't even a bloc, the, the, the sort of, um, I don't know, the, the pariah, international pariahs meeting each other because no one else will, versus uh, the US-led alliance bloc, which includes NATO and, of course, South Korea, Japan, Australia, more than 40 countries in that bloc.